so a person comes to you with the BP up 160 by 100 is it hypertension or not when there is a lot of gray area in which we are not clear whether to label it's hypertension or not so we must know the exact definition of hypertension so how do you diagnose hypertension that this patient has got hypertension this patient has not got hypertension so when will be a single reading is suggestive of hypertension there are two conditions in which you take a single reading and that is suggestive of hypertension you manage on the line of hypertension straight away you do not wait for monitoring if a BP of 180 by 110 or more whether there is an organ damage or not but whenever you see this reading 180 by 110 or more than 180 by 110 this is hypertension straight away you need no monitoring for this and you start the patient on treatment the second rule is if the BP is 160 by 100 or more than 160 by 100 but there is end organ damage this is again hypertension straight away start on treatment in all others all others mean suppose for example a, a patient is having 160 by 100 BP and there is no end organ damage is it hypertension or not so you apply this criteria so you do monitoring you are having three option monitoring hospital monitoring home monitoring and ambulatory monitoring Hosp the most accurate is ambulatory monitoring in which a machine is applied to your arm and that monitors your BP around the clock that is for 24 hours and then the, it takes the average but that is not possible in each and every patient in OPD so we either apply hospital criteria or home criteria and the rules for the hospital criteria is there must be at least three visits but is in our setup three visits are not possible so two visits at least after the exclusion of these two things so two visits at least one week or two weeks apart if that is more than 140 by 90 this is hypertension and start on the treatment home one week monitoring you you take the morning reading and the evening reading and you take that for one evening and you take the average of the morning reading then you take the average of the evening reading then you add them morning and evening and you take the average of morning and evening if that is more than 135 by 85 this is hypertension this is hypertension and start away uh, and start the patient on treatment straight away in ambulatory if the BP is more than 130 by 80 this is hypertension so this is actually the exact definition of hypertension according to the up-to-date criteria and we must follow them so now coming toward the <coughs> white coat hypertension that is hypertension inside the hospital but normal tension outside the hospital in the hospital there is hypertension and outside the hospital the blood, the blood pressure is normal so if you give a drug to this patient when he comes out of the hospital the blood pressure was normal and when he take the dose he will be having hypotension and he will fall down and he will hypotensive this is a very great disadvantage of this that we diagnose the patient with white coat hypertension and treat it when the person goes home the blood pressure becomes normal automatically and he takes the dose when he takes the dose what happens BP drops so <clears throat> that is the reason that we must check blood pressure at home if possible with a valid device and that is the reason we have to check three times even in hospital setting the blood pressure but the ideal way to check the to, to exclude white coat hypertension is to check the blood pressure at home or apply ambulatory device now why there is a white coat hypertension the reason is anxiety anxiety and another reason is smell of smell of the hospital in, in hospital there is a specific smell so that smell actually 
activate the sympathetic system so as uh, one clue that can give you uh, that can give you suspicion of white coat hypertension that is tachycardia if you see the patient the patient is tachycardic and dry mouth think of white coat hypertension think of white coat hypertension outside healthcare facility hypertension now that is totally opposite to that the incidence of this one is rare as compared to white coat hypertension that is inside the hospital the blood pressure is normal but when the person check blood pressure at home that is very high so this must be considered resistant hypertension three or more than three drugs including a diuretic in a maximum tolerated dose is called resistant hypertension well most of the patient if you see the blood pressure is not according to the target target is 140 by 90 in the absence of end organ damage in the presence of end organ damage 130 by 80 and in diabetic 130 by 80 so if these targets are not achieved and the patient is on three or more than three drugs including a diuretic in a maximum tolerated dose and the blood pressure is not according to the target think of resistant hypertension but again resistant hypertension is divided into two pseudo resistant hypertension and true resistant hypertension if you see these patients in majority of these patients they are not taking the drug and they take the drug when they suspect that they are having high blood pressure so that won't work we already know that we need a constant concentration of the drug in our blood all the time if that concentration drops it will not work to lower the bp a single dose cannot lower the bp uh, long enough so first check for the compliance whether the patient is actually taking the drug or not second check the dosage and the content whether there are three drugs or not dosage are correct or not then the third re third is reading outside the hospital so you check the reading outside the hospital whether the, the patient is having white coat hypertension or not so you also exclude that if all these three things are normal this is true resistant hypertension if all these three things are there this is true resistant hypertension but in most of the cases it is pseudo resistant hypertension in 70 to 80 percent in books it is written 70 to 80 percent it is pseudo resistant hypertension and the reason is poor compliance so you must check the three things if these are fulfilled then this is true resistant hypertension so what is the most common cause of true resistant hypertension obstructive sleep apnea on the top will the obstructive sleep apnea we know that there is a trend toward the obesity all the people are getting obese due to the the poor quality of life so obesity is a risk factor for obstructive sleep apnea and in the obstructive sleep apnea a person is having hypoxia at night and co2 retention both hypoxia and co2 retention activate the sympathetic system if that is activating sympathetic system what it is causing it is causing hyperaldosteronism which causes salt and water retention it causes vasospasm increasing the peripheral resistance it causes tachycardia increasing the cardiac output the second most common cause of true resistant hypertension is hyperthyroidism we must look for the hyperthyroidism if there may or may not be any symptom or signs in a patient we must go for it in case of true resistant hypertension so in 70 to 80 percent of true resistant hypertension the, these are the two most common causes obstructive sleep apnea and hyperthyroidism well if these two are excluded we also have to look for the other causes of secondary hypertension such as the acromegaly such as the cushing disease such as the cones syndrome such as the bilateral renal artery stenosis so we must go for blood investigation in order to diagnose all other causes of secondary hypertension but this was about the true resistant hypertension versus the pseudo resistant hypertension and what to look for if you diagnose a patient with this condition